a dramatic scene of confusion and panic and a foggy and a very dark and dangerous environment and there are whistles, there are screams and then there is a sinking within 20 to 25 minutes of the mending. The fated SS Mendy left Cape Town Harbour on the 16th of January 1917, carrying 802 black soldiers and 22 white officers from the South African Native Labour Corps. It stopped in Calabar, Nigeria and Plymouth en route to France. It was struck in the English Channel by the SS Darrow and sank within 25 minutes. 646 men lost their lives. 607 of them were black South Africans. During World War I, 25,000 South African men joined the Native Labour Corps. According to the racist laws under the Union of South Africa, they were barred from carrying arms and mixing with white communities. They were relegated to manual labour. They were exposed to the same risks as, as the white soldiers who could defend themselves, you know, because they had arms. But these guys were just supposed to, to not be able to defend themselves. So, so for me, that was a great injustice. In 1910, the Union of South Africa adopted segregationist policies pertaining to black people, whom it excluded both politically and socially. The 1913 Land Act allocated only 7% of land for settlement by black people. One would be tempted to think that Africans were forced to go to the war. But closer reading of what happened then suggests that they were not forced. They were recruited and in some sense, no, I'm tempted you know, to think that you know, they voluntarily participated in the war. Africans always had this, especially African leaders at the time, including the leaders of the ANC, which was at the time called National Native Congress. The leaders of the time you know, had this view that the British would protect them against the Boers. And since the call for the war was made by the British, it is understandable why the Africans acceded to the call. Of course, now there were promises that were made by the recruiters, like you know, the poll tax would be relaxed, pass laws would be relaxed, grants of land you know, would be made, and so on. But as we know, none of this was fulfilled. Before leaving South Africa for France, the men spent three weeks training in Cape Town at the Rosebank showgrounds. Today, it is a soccer pitch at the University of Cape Town. The Mendy narrowly escaped a different fate. A few hours before it left Cape Town, a German warship appearing as a freight carrier entered the Cape's waters to lay deadly sea mines. It noted the Mendy convoy's passage, but let it pass without incident. Natalia Sifuba has taken over campaigning to keep the memory of the men who died on the SS Mendy alive from her late mother, Joyce Numbuiselo Kalaute, who urged South Africans to remember and pay tribute to the dead and forgotten men of the Mendy. My connection to the SS Mendy is that my ancestor the Reverend Isaac William Shop woke up, was aboard the SS Mendy in 1917 when it sank in the English Channel. After training as a, as a teacher, he then decided to move into the ministry, which he administered for almost 24 years. Still in, in Fort Beaufort, he had his own church and he had his own uh, congregation. He was outspoken. He was very much involved in the community activities. He ended up even getting into political activism. 
that activity unbeknown to him that later generations to follow like myself ended up into the same path of political activism. But when word came out to say the government was looking for volunteers to enlist in the army, this is when he volunteered. It is thought that perhaps he decided to go to the army to, because of a, a moral, on, on moral grounds, to serve the king and the republic. He, he was already 64 by then. Most of the men that uh, enlisted were younger than him, but he still got into that ship as a chaplain, and prior to that, he was also an interpreter. This photograph, taken in Cape Town during training for the Labour Corps' voyage, is thought to be of the Reverend addressing the men who would sail on the Mandy. Isaac Dioba Warkop's famous last words, accompanied by a death drill or death dance on the deck of the sinking ship, are said to have been relayed by the men who survived the wreck. You are going to die, but that is what you came to do. Brothers, we are thrilling the death thrill. I, a Kosa, say you are my brothers, Swazis, Pondos, Basutu. So let us die like brothers. We are the sons of Africa. The government made no attempt to inform families of the fate of their loved ones. Even though it, uh, uh, it sank in February, word came out in only in April. Through, uh, by word of mouth, nothing from the gov nothing official from the government to inform the relatives that their relatives have since passed away. On the 21st of February, 1917, the SS Mandy, carrying 802 black and 22 white South African soldiers, sank in the English Channel within 25 minutes of being struck by the SS Darrow. And it was so cold, I think it was something in the region of 7 degrees. If you were to put your hand in icy water or you take a a bowl of uh, ice cube and put it, your fingers in there. That's how cold it was. And I was there, and, I was, and was it five years ago? I could feel how the men, some of them, died out of shock and the suddenness of the collision. Because it was against the policy of previous South African governments to acknowledge black heroism, the story of the Mandy was little known about. Occasionally, though, it was exploited to promote South Africa's image abroad. The SS Mandy and uh, the black lives in world wars, etc., and Africa's role in, 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 in the world war and world wars have always been downplayed or it's been invisible or people know very little of it. And if there is a focus on the Mendy, it's very military history and our scholarship is very much a Eurocentric scholarship. Lucy Graham is the project manager for the Mendy Centenary Exhibition and Conference hosted by the Centre for African Studies at the University of Cape Town. I'm from the Eastern Cape and my father was a lecturer at Fort Hay University and he just, yeah, he came across this poem, Okuchwana Kokamendi, which is about the, po about the sinking of the Mendi um, by the Isikosa poet Mkai. During the apartheid years, th this was sort of suppressed. Um, I believe it was still taught in the schools though, in the rural areas to black um, children, but white Kids generally know nothing about the story, but if you speak to any black South African, they generally know about the story of the Mendy. So there's kind of this break in our history almost. There's this kind of divide in, in what, what people know about it. Um, and they, they generally know about it through having come across the poem, Okuchona Kukamendi. Hilary Graham painted dramatic scenes of the Mendy sinking and men desperately trying to cling to life. People have said about his paintings, 
oh, but the sea was very calm that day, you know, there was no, um, there, were, there, were, there were none of these like dramatic waves that are in your painting, um, you know. But, you know, what he's trying to convey is something different, which is the turbulence of the whole, you know, I encounter and, and, and the, the, dis the confusion, the disarray. But the turbulence of, of, of people's lives back at home, where, for instance, the Native Land Act had just been passed. My first encounter with Mendy is through the stories of my grandparents, who were teenagers during the time you know, of the First World War, having been born in the 1890s and early 1900s. And then uh, the other significant encounter that I had with the story of the Mendy was through the poetry of S. E. K. M. Clay, you know, uh, was a famous poet. Uh, uh, and we got to do his poetry at school. As the Chaplain General of the South African National Defence Force, Brigadier General Andrew Jamangile plays a key role in commemorating the Mendi soldiers. Conducting memorials for the soldiers who died in the World War I and World War II is one of an honourable things to do. In the recent years, one of our curators based in France, uh, he called me and uh, he said, apparently they have discovered that uh, there was Jamangile by the name of Jim, who also sank with those great heroes in the SS Mendy uh, ship. So that's how I knew that there was this great grandfather of mine who was part of those 604 soldiers who sank in SS Mendy. In actual fact, I was shocked because it would have been much better if I knew before or maybe if I had one of his photos. Uh, but uh, having said that, I tried to find out who is Jim Jamangile. When I recollected the stories given by my father to me and also to us as a family, it could have been one of these, one of the, 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 the men that he spoke about, it probably might be, have been one of his uh, uh, brothers or maybe his, older, his elderly brothers, uh, Jim Jamangil. Uh, when I discovered that Jamangil was part of the sinking of SS Mendy, uh, you know, when I'm conducting the, the, the service or when I speak about this hero, then I look at myself as a descendant who is a soldier and uh, then I understand where this inheritance is coming from. So that's why I'm saying it brings mixed feelings of joy and also of remembrance. Jacques de Frisse's great-grandfather, Fitz Clarence Jarvis Fitzpatrick, was one of the survivors of the SS Mendy shipwreck. My connection to the SS Mendy started in 2012 when I received information I requested from the South African National Defence Forces Documentation Centre in Pretoria, the Defence Force Archives, where I requisitioned information pertaining to my grandmother's father's, my great-grandfather's military history. And uh, in it, it highlighted the date of his attestation into the South African military and also, most tellingly, um, the passage to, to France on the troop ship Mendy, in which it said uh, embarked Cape Town uh, 15th of January 1917 and then in a margin wrecked SS Mendy uh, 21 Feb uh, 1917. Fluent in Kosa, Jacques' great-grandfather was a non-commissioned officer and translator in the Native Labour Corps. He fought in the Bechuanaland campaign, one of the frontier wars uh, that took place before the Second Anglo-Boer War. And he also fought 
once again in the Second Anglo-Boer War with the Cape Police. And then uh, by the time of the First World War and people joining up, he would have been too old for frontline service. What we do know from the military records is that um, during the Anglo-Boer War, he suffered a very bad injury whilst on the railways. He had um, broken ribs and perforated lungs, which uh, resulted in him coughing for most of his life. And when he was immersed in the cold water of the English Channel after the Mendy sank, the cold water affected his breathing way so much that it would have uh, created an even greater disability in him and would have then uh, seen to him being discharged only months after arriving in France. A fellow officer who also survived the shipwreck described in a letter his ordeal. To the right of him is thought to be Jacques' great-grandfather. Dear Jack, no doubt you'll be surprised to hear from me being in this part of the globe. Well, old boy, I left Cape Town last January with the native labour contingent and very nearly went under. I suppose you read in the papers of the collision of the steamers in the channel. Well, old boy, I got out safe, but damn near finished me. I have been in hospital for some time, but um, have recovered my health again. Enclosed, find photo taken at Richmond Hospital, London, after the wreck. Mendy was hit by a much larger vessel, the SS Darrow, which came out of nowhere that night without warning, smashing into the side of Mendy. There was a board of inquiry afterwards which criticised the captain of the Darrow, partly for his conduct during the incident. But also the Darrow didn't lower its lifeboats, unlike other ships which came to the aid of those in the water. And that's proved to be a very controversial aspect of the whole incident for many years later. Several bodies were washed ashore including along the south coast of England and as far as Nordvik in Holland for a period of months after the wreck. This old cemetery in East Sussex is where Willie Chavana's grave is. His body was washed ashore near a place called the Burling Gap. The Hollybrook Memorial in Southampton in England is dedicated to all the men who died at sea during World War I, including those in the Mendy. Experts are divided about whether the famous death roll on the deck of the sinking ship actually happened and whether Reverend Joba Wokop said his famous words. Darrow struck it almost uh, to an extent of uh, closing in the area where some of the men were asleep. And those who had to rush out had no time to do anything else but jump to their safety onto the lifeboats in the water. So there was no time to be poetic or even contemplate death. Death was at their door. For me, the story is what, what is important and the, and the meaning of the story for people, you know, and I would never want to take that meaning of that story away from anyone by saying that isn't true, you know, that's, that didn't happen or something. Um, you know, it, it is there in the oral tradition. So that to me is, is, is significant enough. And so we treat that as, as, as part of the story of, of the Mendy, you know, the dancing, the death troll. Bosle Bezwe Siwani, a Sangoma and artist, is more concerned with symbolism than hard facts in her work, which speaks of loss, rebirth, and the continued existence of the departed. I read as well when I was doing research that the men knew that this is what they had come for. They had come to die. So something tells me that they were okay and they are at peace because when you go into water, essentially you yourself are water. And um, there's many stories about Cossack lands coming out and being made out of water. So essentially you're going back to the beginning. You're going back to your real home. After the war, black soldiers received neither acknowledgement nor compensation for their contributions. 
I mean, there were stories of very, you know, uh, little reward being given to the people, like a bicycle and, a, and, a, and an army jacket. And, and you never got to hear uh, about uh, pensions, you know, about compensation, uh, and uh, uh, about being honored, given medals, like, you know, some of the white people were involved in the war effort were given all those things, including land. The story of the Mandy is still little known about. Several passionate individuals I spoke to are trying to make this shared history of ours part of public discourse. I think it's all about remembrance and um, knowing where, where you come from and knowing the sacrifices that uh, people have made, like the members that served on, that went on Mendy, members of the SA Native Labour Contingent. These were African soldiers that went to war. And uh, many of our sailors that serve on, on board our ships in the SA Navy were probably not aware of, of this. So often we think that once we have a statue, or once we've done a, a, a plaque, that now it's done, the work is done. The memorialization only gets life through conversations with people, because it is about people. It's about spaces, it's about people interacting, and it's about those interventions and layers of interventions around the memorial, which goes into school education, teacher training, goes into performance, the work of artists, the work of writers, the work of poets, the work of musicians, and only then can it redress. What uh, we have not done uh, correctly as MKMVA, but including the Department of Military Veterans, it's to mobilize our society and the communities to understand the centenary of the sinking of Mendy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we, we take a blame that we did not prioritize it. The 21st of February is known as Armed Forces Day in honor of the men of the SS Mendy. The Department of Defense and the MK Military Veterans Association commemorated the centenary anniversary in the English Channel above the watery grave of the SS Mandy wreck. 30 representatives of families whose ancestors were aboard the Mandy and who had been anticipating the day for months shared their feelings about the day with us. It was just a sense of excitement um, that I've actually come to pay respect to my ancestor um, for his bravery and his um, courage. So I know that on behalf of my family, now they have some kind of closure. I know where they are, they are really happy and really excited that, you know, especially as an African person that we've come to collect the spirit in a different manner. Being here uh, on the site of the sinking of the Mendy, it feels extremely emotional to think that uh, we've arrived where they actually perished, where they paid the ultimate price for, for the union then and for the king. So it feels extremely emotional. We thank the South African government for having honored my ancestor and the rest of the main men to recognize them in a century after so many years. At least they have been honored and we are grateful. As I was standing at the edge of the ship preparing to throw the wreath into the water. I imagined in my mind's eye, perhaps 100 years ago, men in the water fighting for their lives. I think uh, immediately about the motto that we have of the South African government now, diverse peoples unite. It's very similar to the motto that uh, is uh, 
emblazoned on our Commonwealth war gravestones, uh, unity is strength, Indracht mag mag. And uh, today's commemoration is a manifestation of that. We, the diverse peoples, have united to commemorate the loss of those people. Myself, a descendant of uh, Color Sergeant Fitzpatrick, uh, the descendant of uh, Reverend Isaac uh, Dioba, uh, and others.